Hello again, AP Calculus BC students. Mr. Record here from Avon High School, looking at video number three in our series over topic 8.13, the arc length of a function. Got a special little function planned for you here that uh, will give you an option at the very beginning on how you want to attack it. And it's got another quite different type of technique that we're going to use to integrate than what we saw in our previous examples. So let's take a look at example three. So the directions to example three say to find the arc length of the graph of y minus one quantity cubed equal x squared on the interval zero to eight as shown to the right. And we see the graph, which is nice, and it does give us a little bit of insight into really what we're trying to find. Maybe we can even check our answer for reasonableness when we're all finished. I know the title of the problem is a little strange, finding arc length, um, finding arc length, finding arc length twice. We're going to do it. We love it so much, we're going to do it twice. Well, actually, it, there's, there is kind of a sort of subliminal message there because we can do it with respect to x or y, but we don't have to do it twice. We have to make a decision, though. Do we want to take this integral with respect to x or with respect to y? In other words, do we want our function to be in x by itself, or do we want our function to have y by itself? And really, the choice is yours. It makes oftentimes very little difference. Sometimes students will decide to go with the easier approach, the, the one that's a little bit less time consuming to solve for. So I'm going to make the decision for you in this particular case. And I'm going to decide to solve for x, because it's a little different than what we've seen in our previous video. And besides, you can see that my function over here has been sort of declared uh, with an x by itself. So what would this all look like here? Well, we're going to see about taking the square root of both sides. And I'm going to leave a little bit of room because I would like to give this guy a name here in just a little bit. We're going to talk about that. Instead of calling this x equals, which I honestly, I, I don't have a problem with that, but I've got another special name for it here in a moment. And by square rooting both sides of this, we essentially just have y minus 1 raised to the 3 halves power. Now, normally when you take the square root, you would put a plus or minus here, right? It's one of our considerations in, in dealing with the definition of the square root of, of, of a quantity. Well, we don't have to worry about doing that. And the reason is because x is always going to take on this positive value for the most part. I know it might be zero at that split moment, but it's certainly not going to be negative. So we don't have to put the negative there. And as far as what we want to call this, I have a special name. It's a function in terms of y, so why not call it g of y? Now the reason why I call it g of y is if you go back to an earlier video or if you have a copy of my notes, I use g of y to denote the function that we integrate in terms of y. All right. So why not find g prime of y? That's what's going to come next. Because the reason is that our length of our arc is going to be some integral between a couple of boundaries. I'm going to call those boundaries c and d in this case. And we know that we're going to integrate 1 plus g prime of y quantity squared, all with respect to y. Right? Hey there, how you doing? I'm kind of in the way, aren't I? That's all right. That's all right. You're fine. Stay where you're at. <laughs> so that's what we're going to take a look at when we take the derivative of our y minus 1 to the 3 halves. We just simply get 3 halves quantity y minus 1 to the 1 half power. And of course, we could multiply by 1 to really enact that chain rule. But as you can see, it doesn't really amount to much here. And then the final thing is let's go ahead and square this g prime of y that we just found, which is one of our easier things that we've squared so far. Square the 3 halves, you get 9 fourths, and square the y minus 1 to the 1 half, and you'll just get y minus 1 to the first. We are all ready to assemble our arc length. L would be some integral. Let's worry about the boundaries in a bit. Square root of 1 plus, and there's our g prime squared. 9 fourths quantity y minus 1 all under a square root still, and taken with respect to y. Now, we have a very crucial 
juncture here in the problem. We have to think about these boundaries. And, and this is something that could really get us into trouble. Because if we read the problem a little too literally, we can be hypnotized into thinking that the boundaries are going to go from 0 to 8. I know that that's what the problem says. But that's just an interval that's given to describe this graph. It's one interval that describes it, for sure, along the x-axis. But because we're integrating with respect to y, think for a second. What do you think the boundary should be then? And if you're thinking 1 to 5, you're thinking correctly. We have to integrate from 1 to 5. Otherwise, we're not going to get a correct answer. Now, to continue with this, we're going to clean up the interior of this square root because it's just not quite derivative ready. So if we distribute this 9 fourths into the y minus 1, we get 9 fourths y minus another 9 fourths, but if I add 1 to that minus 9 fourths, in other words, if I add 9, uh, if I take 5, I'm sorry, if I take 4 over 4 minus 9 over 4, I believe I'm going to get negative 5 over 4. And I think we're now ready to take a look at this integral. And it's one that's a little bit more manageable than what we've been seeing in the past. We don't have to jump through as many algebraic hoops. All we have going here is just a u substitution. u would be 9 fourths y minus 5 fourths. Okay, well what does that accomplish? Well that means that the derivative of u is 9 fourths and we can multiply the dy over and we essentially just have this constant that we know we're going to have to offset with, right? We're going to have to multiply by its reciprocal, as you've seen us do many times in our videos, of some integral of the square root of the u with respect to u. So we've certainly cleaned this up a little bit to make it more manageable. My personal preference is once we've written this in terms of u, Maybe we go ahead and change the boundaries to make them in terms of u so we never have to go back to x. So we can stay where we were. So u evaluated when the upper boundary is 5 just gives us 9 fourths times 5 minus 5 fourths. Now if you look at this, it looks kind of hideous at first, but it's just 45 fourths minus 5 fourths, which is 40 fourths, which of course is 10. So it results in a pretty clean upper boundary. And if we do a similar process with the 1 lower boundary, we get 9 fourths times 1 minus 5 fourths. Well, that is 4 fourths, which is 1. And so that's interesting. The 1 doesn't even change. It stays as a 1. So now we're all set to do our integration. So that 4 ninths stays out in front. We integrate our u to the half, which of course is u to the 3 halves, divide by 3 halves, which is the same thing as multiplying by 2 thirds here. And we still have our boundaries, 10 upper boundary, a 1 lower boundary, and we're pretty much home free. One other little wrinkle, we want to talk about this in a second um, with you. So let's see what I've got here. Um, I've got 4 ninths times 2 thirds, which I um, don't know how much reducing that we can do with that. I don't see really much of anything. So we'd have 8 27ths. And then when we plug in a 10, now this is what I wanted to discuss. If we plug in a 10 and raise it to the 3 halves, I don't really see many other alternatives than to just call this 10 to the 3 halves power. All right, we'll finish our fundamental theorem by subtracting, and if we plug 1 and raise it to the 3 halves, that's a little bit more manageable, of course, right? We, we like that. And so this whole thing is going to be our answer. Now, are there, all there, are there other alternatives? Well, there might be, but this 10 to the 3 halves you could have written it as the square root of 10 cubed, which is the square root of 1,000, but honestly, I don't think that looks any better. The square root of 1,000 does simplify to 10 square root of 10 if you pull out a common perfect square. 
I don't think that looks any better. And so quite often, a lot of the multiple choice questions, at least that I write, will leave the final results looking like this. And it's really common to see a lot of 3 halves powers attached to non-perfect squares, because that 3 halves power comes from a square root, right? A square root's integral, and it's pretty clear you're going to see a lot of square roots because that's part of the formula. And if you were to take a graphing calculator, or any calculator for that matter, and estimate this and, and write this as a decimal, I think it's around 9, a little bit slightly more than 9. You can check that out for yourself. And if I were to look at this curve, I would say, yeah, that's probably a little bit more than 9. You know, you have to account for the sort of diagonal direction and the fact that it's curved. So it certainly seems like it's going to be longer than 8. And it, sure enough, it, it is. You could have also set this up by solving for y. It looks a little bit different. It's going to yield the same answer. That's something that you can kind of try on your own. You now know the answer, so you can check it out. But you should get the same thing. Got a few more videos left for you for this particular topic. We'd like you to stick around and check them out. Thank you for joining.